We incorporated Starbase, Texas. This is uh, the first new city made in America in, I think, quite a few decades. Uh, that, uh, at least that's what I'm told. And a uh, very cool name. And it's named that because it is, the, it is where we're going to develop the technology necessary to take uh, humanity uh, and civilization and, and life as we know it to another planet for the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. What if you could wake up on Earth and go to sleep on Mars, all in the same day? NASA's latest rocket technology is promising to do just that, leaving SpaceX's Starship in the dust. Forget the six-month slog through space. This new engine could make the red planet a quick trip. Is this the breakthrough that will finally make Mars feel close to home? Stick around because you won't believe how fast the future is coming. The long road to Mars. You know, five million pounds of thrust is a really crazy amount of power. Uh, more than twice as much payload as any other rocket in the world. It can launch things direct to Pluto. No stop needed. Six months in space is a really long time. Think about it. That's half a year floating in a metal tube, exposed to dangerous cosmic radiation, losing bone mass, and dealing with the psychological strain of being confined in a capsule far from Earth. When Elon Musk talks about sending people to Mars aboard SpaceX's Starship, this six-month journey represents one of the biggest hurdles to making humans a multi-planetary species. Astronauts would need to pack enough food, water, and supplies for the entire trip adding weight to the spacecraft. They'd also need medical equipment to handle emergencies since there's no turning back once you're halfway to Mars. NASA scientists have been studying these challenges for decades, knowing that shortening travel time isn't just about convenience, it's about survival and making Mars missions practical. SpaceX's current solution, Starship. So far, SpaceX has only performed a few pressure tests on Booster 4 their most complete super heavy booster. These tests usually involve filling the booster's tanks with cryogenic liquid to simulate the temperatures and pressures it will experience during a flight. Starship is an absolute beast of engineering. Standing taller than the Statue of Liberty when mounted on its super heavy booster, this massive stainless steel rocket represents the most powerful launch vehicle ever built. The rocket's power comes from its array of 29 Raptor engines, which burn methane and liquid oxygen to generate incredible thrust. These aren't your average rocket engines. They use what engineers call a full-flow staged combustion cycle, which is super efficient compared to older designs. SpaceX chose methane fuel deliberately because it can potentially be manufactured on Mars, enabling return trips. Despite all these innovations, Starship still relies on chemical combustion, which means there's a limit to how fast it can ultimately go. Even with Starship's impressive specs, the laws of physics dictate that the journey to Mars will take approximately six months, and that's assuming you launch during the optimal transfer window that only opens every 26 months. The chemical rocket ceiling. There's a fundamental problem with chemical rockets that no amount of engineering can fully overcome. They're limited by the exhaust velocity they can achieve, essentially how fast they can shoot propellant out the back end. This ceiling exists because chemical reactions can only release so much energy. It's like trying to make a car go faster by burning gasoline more efficiently. At some point, you hit the limits of what combustion can do. This is measured by something rocket scientists call specific impulse, which is basically fuel efficiency for rockets. The best chemical rockets, including SpaceX's Raptor engines, top out around 450 seconds of specific impulse. This means that no matter how much we refine chemical rocket technology, we'll never dramatically reduce that six-month trip to Mars using conventional propulsion. To truly revolutionize space travel, we need a completely different approach to generating thrust. Enter nuclear power. 
First-generation nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP, could enable both faster transit between the Earth and Mars and a series of advanced space missions. Nuclear thermal propulsion is powered by nuclear fission, which has been used on Earth for more than 70 years. How it works is conceptually simple. Energy from fission is used to heat hydrogen to about 4,400 degrees Fahrenheit. This hydrogen is then accelerated through a nozzle, resulting in a propellant efficiency roughly twice that of the best chemical rocket engines. Nuclear thermal propulsion was considered for use in the Apollo program, and significant development and ground testing was accomplished. Advances in technology since the 1960s may improve its affordability, viability, and acceptability. For example, it may be possible to fuel modern NTP systems with low-enriched uranium, instead of highly enriched uranium. In addition, it may now be possible to ground test NTP systems at established, safe, self-contained rocket engine test facilities. This is where NASA's game-changing technology comes in, nuclear thermal propulsion. While it might sound scary at first, this technology has actually been studied since the 1960s and modern designs make it safer than ever before. The basic idea is simple but powerful. Instead of creating thrust through burning chemicals, nuclear rockets use a nuclear reactor to superheat a propellant, usually hydrogen, and shoot it out at speeds much faster than possible with chemical combustion. The result, nearly twice the fuel efficiency of even the best chemical rockets, like the Raptors. This isn't some far-off dream technology. NASA, in partnership with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, is actively developing this system with plans to demonstrate it as early as 2027. The potential to cut travel time to Mars in half, or potentially even more with advanced designs, has space agencies and scientists buzzing with excitement. How nuclear rockets actually work. Let's break down how these nuclear rockets actually function without getting too technical. At the heart of a nuclear thermal propulsion system is essentially a nuclear reactor, similar to ones used in power plants, but specially designed for space. When operating, the reactor's nuclear fission process, where uranium atoms split apart, generates tremendous heat. This heat is then transferred to a propellant, typically hydrogen, which passes through channels in the reactor core. The hydrogen gets superheated to extreme temperatures, expanding rapidly and blasting out of the rocket nozzle at incredible speeds. Unlike chemical rockets, where the energy comes from the chemical reaction itself, in nuclear rockets, the propellant is just along for the ride. It's simply the working fluid that gets heated and expelled. This allows for much higher exhaust velocities and thus greater efficiency. The reactor itself doesn't get consumed during operation, it just serves as a heat source that can run for extended periods. This means less propellant is needed overall, making the spacecraft lighter and faster. The Draco program, making it real. NASA isn't just theorizing about nuclear propulsion, they're actively building it through a program called DRACO, Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations. This joint initiative between NASA and DARPA has already contracted aerospace giant Lockheed Martin and nuclear specialist BWX Technologies to develop the first flight-ready nuclear thermal rocket since the 1970s. They're aiming to launch a demonstration mission by 2027, which would place a nuclear-powered spacecraft in Earth orbit to prove the technology works. The Draco system is designed to be safe from the ground up. The nuclear reactor remains completely inactive during launch, only turning on once the spacecraft reaches a safe orbit far from Earth. This eliminates any risk during the critical launch phase. If successful, this demonstration could pave the way for human missions to Mars with dramatically reduced travel times. Scientists and engineers working on the project are confident the technology is mature enough to succeed where earlier attempts stalled due to technical and political challenges. Safety first, modern nuclear design. When most people hear nuclear and rocket in the same sentence, they might get nervous. But modern nuclear thermal propulsion systems address many of the concerns that halted similar programs decades ago. 
Today's designs use low-enriched uranium fuel instead of the weapons-grade stuff from the 60s, making it impossible to repurpose for weapons. The reactor is engineered with multiple safety systems that prevent it from operating until safely in space. Even in the worst-case scenario of a launch failure, the reactor would remain intact without releasing radioactive material. The technology has advanced tremendously since the early experiments, with modern materials capable of withstanding the extreme temperatures and radiation environments inside these engines. NASA and DARPA are working with regulatory agencies to ensure every safety standard is not just met but exceeded. This isn't your grandfather's nuclear rocket program. It's been reimagined with 21st century technology and safety protocols. Reimagining the journey to Mars. The trip to, to Mars is like, what, six months? Is that what the idea is? When you want to go to Mars, you basically accelerate in the same path of, of Earth going around the Sun. And you time it such that your acceleration gives you an elliptical orbit around the Sun, where the tip of the ellipse uh, intersects with Mars. So Mars is going around, you go and you just time it to coincide with the tip of your ellipse being Mars. And that turns out to be about a six month journey. There's only about a six month period every two years when uh, Earth and Mars are aligned such that you can do the transfer. You can certainly imagine that if Mars is on the other side of the sun, you can't get there. This is like about a quarter of every Mars year is when you can do the transfer. So one, six months every two years. Now you can speed that up. I think, uh, I mean, I can, can sort of see a way to get make it happen in say three months, where the intersection with Mars would not be at the tip of the ellipse, but on the edge of the ellipse. That would mean the tip of the ellipse is out near Jupiter. So if you miss Mars, you're gonna end up at Jupiter, uh, Jupiter's orbit. Think about what cutting the Mars journey from six months to just a few weeks would mean. Astronauts would need far less food, water, and supplies they'd suffer less exposure to harmful space radiation and lose less bone and muscle mass in microgravity. The psychological challenges of isolation would be significantly reduced. Mission planners could send heavier scientific equipment and more supplies for establishing a permanent presence. Emergency scenarios become less catastrophic when Earth is weeks rather than months away. Beyond the practical benefits, shorter travel times would allow for more frequent missions to Mars accelerating exploration and potential colonization efforts. The entire paradigm of deep space exploration changes when the solar system effectively shrinks due to faster travel. What was once a dangerous, marathon-like endurance test becomes something closer to an extended stay in orbit, challenging but within our current capabilities. Beyond NTP, the Pulse Plasma Rocket. While nuclear thermal propulsion is revolutionary, NASA isn't stopping there. They're already funding research into even more advanced concepts like the Pulse Plasma Rocket PPR. This next generation technology could potentially make the dream of Mars in a day a reality. PPRs work by creating controlled nuclear pulses that superheat uranium pellets into plasma, which is then directed through electromagnetic nozzles to create thrust. The theoretical performance is mind-blowing up to 5,000 seconds of specific impulse compared to chemical rockets 450 and thrust levels of 100,000 newtons. That's enough to get to Mars in weeks or potentially even days with further refinement. Companies like Howe Industries are partnering with NASA to develop this technology through the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. While still in early research phases, the physics checks out, and the potential for ultra-rapid interplanetary travel makes this one of the most exciting propulsion technologies in development. The new space race, speed versus ready now. As NASA pushes forward with revolutionary nuclear propulsion, SpaceX continues refining its chemical rocket technology with the philosophy that good enough now is better than perfect later. This creates an interesting new space race, Will humans reach Mars first on SpaceX's chemical rockets that are nearly ready? Or will we wait for NASA's nuclear technology that could get us there faster and safer? The answer might not be either or. Many experts believe the future of Mars exploration will involve cooperation with SpaceX potentially providing initial missions, while NASA develops the nuclear propulsion that will make regular Mars travel practical. What's clear is that we are entering a golden age of space propulsion innovation. The technologies being developed today will fundamentally change humanity's relationship with space, making the solar system more accessible than ever before. Whether it takes six months or one day to reach Mars, the red planet is closer than ever to becoming humanity's second home. <laughs>